What's going on guys? Welcome to my VEAT crash course. So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about VEAT, what it does, what its benefits are, and we're going to jump in. We're going to spin up a React application, look at the, the, the boilerplate that's given to us, the starter code and so on. And I also just want to talk about tooling in general, because I think it can be confusing to people that are on the, the kind of the beginner level that have just created their JavaScript files and put them right in the script tag. You have one or two files. And, and that's fine for small projects. If you have a website with a little bit of dynamic functionality or you have a really small front-end application, that's fine. But when you move to using a framework or you're building more modern, dynamic, interactive interfaces, you're going to be using build tools and you're going to need a way to have a, a larger file structure and have that bundled into your production JavaScript that you can then include in the browser. All right, so Vite is one of those tools that can do that. Now, Vite is a more modern way of doing it. So before we talk about Vite, it's important that you understand how traditional module bundlers like Webpack work. So Webpack, what it does is it takes your development file structure, which could be made up of many, many JavaScript files. They could be classes, they could be functions, your import, your exporting code from some files, you're importing into other files, you're using NPM modules, so third party packages, you might have some CSS or SAS, you might have, you might be using post CSS. So you have this kind of uh, large development source code and then what Webpack will do is it'll take all of that and bundle it up into sometimes a single JavaScript file called like bundle.js or main.js. And then that will be included in a script tag in your HTML. So that would be your production build. And that's what happens when you use something like Create React App or Vue CLI. It just all does it under, you know, under the hood. When you use Create React App, it's actually using Webpack under the hood. Now, the issue we have with something like Webpack is that when you're in development and you make a change, it goes through that bundling, that packaging process every single time. It uses Babel, it transpiles the code, and it does it every time, which is okay at first, but as, as you're installing more packages and your application grows, it starts to get really slow. So what Vite does is it works in a different way where in development, it's not rebundling everything every time you make a change. Instead, it, it takes advantage of the native ES modules in the browser, because in modern browsers, you can use ES modules, which is that import export syntax. All right. So and, and you can do that by just having a script tag and then putting a, uh, a type attribute and saying type equals module. And then you can use that syntax. So V takes advantage of that. In fact, it's built on top of something called ES build, which is actually what is using those ES modules and serving your code directly to the browser in development. So V is essentially a, a dev server. It's not a module bundler. Now, when it comes time to actually bundle your files for production, when you run npm run build, it uses something called rollup, which is a, a module bundler. All right, so Vite is very fast because it doesn't have to keep rebundling everything like, like Webpack or Parcel. Now, as far as Create React App goes, I'm seeing a lot of people lately using Vite over Create React App, you know, if they're not using Next.js or Remix. And it, it is faster in many ways. Uh, I don't like to say one thing is better than the other. Uh, Create React App is a great tool. It's been around for a long time, so there's a lot of resources. There's a lot of support for it. I'll continue to use it in courses and tutorials, but Vite is a good uh, alternative, and there's a React plugin that you can use that makes it really easy to get set up. In fact, if you just run the initial command, it'll ask you if you want to use just vanilla JavaScript, React, Vue, Svelte, and, and we'll go over that. We'll see how that works. Now, let's just take a, a quick look at how something like Create React App works, which uses Webpack under the hood. So basically, when we first run Create React App, Webpack is going to look at the entry point, which is going to be the index.js file. And then it'll bundle all the files and modules that are imported in that index.html. Then it's going to transpile the code with Babel. It's going to 
um, set up web sockets for hot reloading. It's going to bundle everything, and then it's going to it's going to serve to the browser, right? When it's, you have your dev server when you run npm start or whatever it is. So this is a great process for development, but the issue is that Create React app has to bundle all the files every time there's a change. And this can start to get slow as your application gets bigger. It also means we have to wait for the files to be bundled before we can see the changes in the browser. Now, if we look at the Vite process, we don't need to bundle everything before starting the server. Vite uses ESBuild to pre-bundle our files and do code splitting on the fly. And this means that we can start the server and we see our changes in the browser immediately and we don't have to wait for the files to be bundled. So this is a, a huge improvement over Create React app. So after the app is served to the browser, Vite will then watch for changes and update the browser in real time. And it uses the browser to parse the ES modules and then it'll bundle files on the fly. And this means that we can see our changes immediately. And when your code contains import and export statements, the browser will request the corresponding files from the server via HTTP. All right, so that's kind of a, a, just a quick rundown of how Vite works. So what I want to do now is jump in and show you how to get started with using Vite for, we're going to use React, but of course you can use it with vanilla JavaScript or another front-end framework. All right, guys, so this is vitejs.dev. This is where you can find all the documentation, configuration options, so anything you need. So if we go to guide here, it will tell us how to get set up. Now, I do want to mention that I have a blog post at my website that is basically, uh, basically falls along with this tutorial. So it talks about a lot of the stuff we've already mentioned and then has the little snippets for commands and the little bit of code that we'll be writing and so on. So I'll have the link to that in the description. So to get started, we can use NPM, Yarn, or PNPM. So I'm going to open up a terminal here and we're going to run NPM create and then Vite at latest and then whatever we want to call the folder, I'm just going to call it Vite app. Now, when I run this, it'll ask what I want to use as far as a framework or vanilla, but we can also add dash dash template uh, template, and then I could say react or view or whatever I want to use, but I'm just going to run it like this and you'll see the choices that we get vanilla view react preact lit svelte and others. I'm going to go ahead and choose react you can use TypeScript. I'm just going to choose JavaScript and then CD into Vite app. And then from here, I'm just going to run VS Code. And I just want to take a look at the file structure. Now, it, throughout this video, it might seem like I'm bashing Create React app, and I'm, I'm really not. I'm just trying to point out the benefits and the features of Vite. And one of those features is the very simple boilerplate file structure that we have here. So you can see it's very light. If we look at our package.json, again, very light. We just have React and React DOM as dependencies. As dev dependencies, we have Vite, we have the React plugin because we chose to use React, and also our types for React. And then as far as scripts go, we have our dev script that's going to go ahead and run Vite, which will run the dev server. We have our build script to build out our files for production using Rollup. And then preview will preview our production build once, once we run npm run build. All right, so simple package.json. The config, again, very simple, very light. All we have here is the define config helper function. That's where we pass in all of our uh, configuration. And here we just have a plugins array with React because that's what we're using. All right, now you can also install other plugins. I'll show you that towards the end. And then we can have a server object here for our dev server options. And I'm going to set port 3000 because the default I believe is like 5173 or something like that. So, and if you want to add a proxy here, you can do that as well. There's other options. You can look at the documentation for that. So let's save that file. And then we're going to go to our index.html, which notice is not in the public folder. The public folder is strictly for assets, images, icons, things like that. Um, index.html is right in the root. And if we look at it, it's very simple. We have our div with the ID of root, just like you would with any React application. And then notice the script tag is using this type equals module. 
So this indicates that we're using ES modules in the browser. And instead of pointing to some bundled JS file, we're actually pointing to our main JSX, which is our React entry point. So if we look at that, that's where React and React DOM are brought in, our main app component. We have a little CSS file uh, with some default styling. And then our rendering here from React DOM, which is rendering our app component. Okay, and if we look at the app component, it's very simple. It's just a simple landing page. We'll, we'll check it out in a minute. And it has some state for account and just has a button that's going to increment that count. All right, so let's go ahead and run the dev server. I'm going to open up my terminal and we're going to say, actually, first of all, we have to run npm install, which will obviously install Vite and all our dependencies, React and so on. Okay, once we do that, we can run npm run dev. That's going to open on 3000. And you're going to notice that everything is just really, really fast. So this is just a basic landing page. It's the app JSX file that I showed you. We have this little button here where we click and it just increments the count state. Okay, so what I want to do now is just create a very simple React component. So let's create a folder called components. And then in there, we'll create a file called header. Let's just say header.jsx. And I'll do RAFCE, enter. I'm just using the React snippets extension. And let's see, we'll just put it in here in the div. Hello, world. And then let's bring that into our app.jsx. So we'll say import header. And we'll put the header component right here. Okay, now I'm going to save that and let's go back here and notice now we get hello world and notice that the state is still here. That count is 12. It didn't reset to zero when I made a change. Okay, so that's an example of HMR or hot module replacement. So another thing that I want to show you is how we can have environment variables. So if we go back to VS Code and we create in the root Okay, you want to make sure you're in the root and we're going to have a dot env file. And this is something you can do with create react app as well. If you have global variables that you want to be accessible throughout your site, then you can have this dot env file where with create react app, you would do react underscore app underscore and then whatever, you know, whatever the, the key you want to use or the variable you want to use. We'll go ahead and use copilot suggestion of API URL. Now, Instead of using react underscore app, we say vite underscore and then whatever the, the variable. So I'm going to save that and then to use it, let's go into our header. And to use that, let's just replace this hello world. We don't do process.env. What we do is import.meta. So import meta and then env and then whatever our, our variable is. So we'll say api underscore URL. Okay, and then if we go back to our homepage here, we should see that value of the API URL. So that's how we can have environment variables. Now, another thing we can do is use SAS out of the box. So let's go back and I'm just going to install SAS. We do need that as a dependency. So we'll install it as a dev dependency. And let's run the server again. And what I'll do is go over to here to the source folder, create a folder called SCSS, where we could have our SAS files and let's create main.scss. And I'm just going to add a simple variable of primary color and we'll set that to, let's say, steel blue. And then I'll add that to the body's background color. Now, when I have the, the CSS file, I can just bring it directly into my component. So I can say import and we're going to do dot slash SCSS slash main dot SCSS. Save that. And now you can see we have our blue background. So it's as easy as that if you want to implement SAS. And then when you're ready to build for production, you can simply run npm run build. Okay, so very quick, 
<clears throat> and then you'll see there's a disk folder here. And if you want to preview that build, you can do npm run preview. And now that's going to open on this local host 4173. So this is our production build. Okay, so pretty simple. Now, as far as plugins go, if you go to the website here and you go to plugins, as far as official plugins, we really just have the, the view plugin, um, React, React with SWC. And then you can also use Rollup plugins because it uses Rollup to bundle your files for production. And then there's also right here, there's a bunch of community plugins. So different integrations, you have like Electron and uh, all kinds of stuff here. PWA, Progressive Web Apps, you have loaders, you have bundling plugins, transformer plugins, helpers. So you can take a look at that. There's just a, there's a lot of different things that you can install and use. There's even a, a Vite SSR plugin that you can use for server-side rendering. So that's it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this. As I said, there is a blog post to go along with it if you want to, uh, if you want to read this. And there's, there is some extra information that I put into here. But, uh, but that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.